This is the Weather Extreme video for Wednesday, the 18th of January. I'm James Spann. Cold air settling in here for a brief time, but uh, we warm up quickly and maybe a pattern change as we start February. Hmm. Let's uh, get in there and take a look. First off, some of the SkyCam shots around the Alpha SkyCam network early this morning at the insane hour of 5 a.m. Let's look at uh, First Baptist Church of Hamilton. They're sitting at 30 degrees. They are below freezing. The sky is clear. Work our way down south. There's a look at downtown Clanton in Chilton County down in Peach Country. And way down south, that's a sky cam in Daphne on the eastern shore of Mobile Bay where the sky is clear. You can see that broad trough carving out over the uh, nation, much of the country, much colder. And look at that powerhouse jet slamming into the Pacific Northwest where Seattle, Washington could see a lot of snow today. Here's a look at the uh, temperatures at 5 o'clock, as cold as 29 in Haleyville. Birmingham sitting at 34. We'll be colder tomorrow. That should be our coldest morning with most spots getting down into the upper 20s. And ooh, buddy, it's cold up north. Look at the cold air covering much of uh, Canada and the northern states. Uh, Cut Bank, Montana this morning, 24 below zero. Ouch. In fact, look at that an extreme cold warning. You know, years ago, they had a cold wave warning. They're kind of bringing that back. That's for all of North Dakota and some of the adjacent states. And look at the snowy mess up in the northwest. Winter storm warnings in effect there. And again, uh, Seattle, maybe 8 to 12 inches. They don't get a lot of snow up there, kind of like us. That's a big anomaly for them. And rain for the next five days. Valley through the weekend through Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. This is suggesting about one inch, and that would be more than likely on Saturday as we start the weekend. And We'll uh, take a look at modeling here. This is the 06 ZGFS, valid at uh, 12 noon today. Very broad troughing over much of the country. Little spokes of energy coming down the backside of that. And down below that, uh, just cold and dry today. Uh, we won't get out of the 40s. Both the NAM and the GFS are showing a high of 47. Tomorrow, we start the day in the upper 20s, but we warm up quickly. We should be up around 60 with a good deal of sunshine. Friday. Southerly winds kick in. We're up in the mid-60s. Clouds increase. We might see a shower in spots by uh, Friday afternoon or Friday night. And then Saturday as we begin the weekend, pretty nice little short wave there. And by golly, that looks wet with a good chance of showers and maybe a thunderstorm. Uh, don't expect any severe weather, but uh, that could bring rain amounts of one half to one inch. And it should be pretty mild. We'll be well up in the 60s. In fact, the GFS is printing a high of 70 on Saturday. So, again, we'll have to watch for signs of any severe weather with that. Uh, it, it's kind of like the deal yesterday. It's, the, you know, these cold season systems, you just don't know about them. At the surface, it doesn't look like a big deal with severe weather, but they can bring a surprise. And then Sunday, uh, we go totally dry now. Uh, and, and notice the thickness values have not changed. We'll still be very mild. Highs way up in the upper 60s, maybe touching 70. Uh the sky perhaps becoming partly sunny. We'll say a mix of sun and clouds. All right, next week, there's just a lot of model madness here. You know, all the storm chaser guys were all freaking out over the GFS, and I tried to caution them, don't do that, because the GFS has been horrible in the medium range. The European is where you need to be. And sure enough, the GFS is now beginning to look more like the European. This is Monday. Uh, pretty good trough there. And that suggests there could be a batch of showers and storms with a cold front Sunday night or early Monday morning. Uh, but behind the front, it's not really that cool. Uh, the 540 line does come down toward Memphis at midday Monday. We'll probably cool down a bit, maybe highs closer to 60 on Monday if this is right. So I think this is the right idea. Uh, we'll mention a chance of showers perhaps Sunday night, early Monday. All right, now let's go to Tuesday. And I'll, again, I'm going to stick with the GFS first, then we'll go to the European. We've got that big uh, strough over West Texas. That's the one to watch. And down below that, Tuesday dries a bone. You know, all the, a lot of guys were all freaking out over a big tornado outbreak on Tuesday. The GFS was flashing that. The European never did. Well, guess what? The GFS now looks just like the Euro. It's dry on Tuesday. Uh, highs in the 60s, still mild. All right, Wednesday, there's your trough to the west. Down below that, uh, wet, stormy around the Arklatex. And then on uh, uh, Thursday, the 26th, the trough is close. No negative tilt in this look. And down below that, the batch of showers and storms. Could be some strong storms, maybe severe, but it's not that classic you know, negative tilt look. 
And then on uh, Friday the 27th, uh, it's, it's out of here and no real cold air. Now let's look at the European. This is Tuesday. It's bone dry. So both the GFS, the Euro, dry Tuesday and mild. And we'll go with that in the forecast. It's got the mess over Texas. And then uh, Thursday, uh, this is Thursday morning at uh, 6 o'clock. It's got the uh, batch of showers and storms coming in here. And again, it's done very well this season. There's no reason to believe it, it's not going to perform well here. So uh, for next week, it looks like that round of uh, showers and storms would be uh, Wednesday night or Thursday. Uh, severe weather, not out of the question. It's a very dynamic system. But understand this is, you know, actually technically in voodoo country, it's eight days out. And we'll have plenty of time to watch that. And then on uh, Friday of next week, uh, it's out of here. And again, a brief cool down. All right, let's check the end of the forecast. Uh, this is the 2nd of February. Oh, boy. Look at that big trough coming down over the nation. And uh oh, that's a 1048 high over Saskatchewan. And yeah, you look, this is, you know, voodoo. We all know that. But if this happened to be right, huh, the, the, the snowless guys in Des Moines and in Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul, they're not going to be snowless anymore if this is right. That's a blizzard for those folks. And down here, that would suggest maybe strong to severe storms. And uh oh, look at the top. You know, after being positive all season long and really going back to the fall, uh, look at what the ensembles want to do with the NAO, that top chart. Uh, you got one member that keeps it positive, but now all of the rest of them take it negative. Could this be the change that we figured might happen? We'll see. That's it for the uh, Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you live around here, we invite you to watch us on television this evening. ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.